Welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons. Please make sure you like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on future content. This is a BTEC Applied Science Unit 5 chemistry lesson and it looks at the ease of electrolysis. Looking at the spec, it's the third bullet point down, ease of electrolysis. If you haven't seen the previous two videos, then I suggest you go away and watch those now. Starting with some definitions then. So electrolysis, it's the decomposition or breakdown of a compound using electricity. The term molten just means that something's in its liquid state. A cation is a positively charged ion. An anion is a negatively charged ion. The term aqueous means that the substance is dissolved in water. And finally, I use the term pancake to help students remember that the anode is positive, so positive anode, and the cathode is negative, negative cathode. If you can remember that, you won't get a headache. So before we go into looking at electrolysis then, a reminder of some things from Unit 1 Chemistry. Ionic substances consist of a giant ionic lattice which includes many strong electrostatic attractions between oppositely charged ions and therefore they have high melting points. They do not conduct when they're solid or in solid phase because the ions are fixed and can't move. However, if you heat it up until it's molten or a liquid or you dissolve it in water, then the ions can move, which means it can conduct do not say movement of electrons it's movement of ions that allow this to conduct okay then so electrolysis it's a way of separating and decomposing substances it works very well for decomposing ionic compounds ions are attracted to the cathode and the anode where they are said to be discharged so let's look at an example of molten sodium chloride. So here the electrolyte must be molten, not solid, because if it's solid, the ions can't move and can't conduct. And the electrolyte must be able to conduct. So here we are using molten sodium chloride. You can see that the anode and cathode are connected via a direct current power supply. When that power supply is turned on, the cations are going to move towards the cathode and the anions are going to move towards the anode. You can see that there. And that's because the cathode is negative, hence the positive ions will be attracted to it. And the anode being positive means the negative ions will be attracted to it. Let's look more closely then at what happens at each of the electrodes. So the ions present are sodium ions and chloride ions. Make sure you get the charges correct. We know this because sodium's in group one and chloride's in group seven. So if you're not sure of those charges, I suggest you brush up on uh, predicting charges using the periodic table. So here we have the negative electrode, then we have the cathode. The positive sodium ions are going to be attracted to this cathode. And when they get there, they will gain electrons. So electrons will be gained at the cathode by the positive ions and they will be discharged as the element. In this case, the element will be sodium. And we can show that using a half equation to show that one sodium will gain an electron to become sodium element. You would actually see metal sodium formed at the cathode. Now this is most likely going to be a liquid because it will be at a very high temperature in order to melt the sodium chloride. Let's have a look at what's happening at the anode then. So again, the ions present are sodium plus and chloride, Cl minus. This time it's going to be the negative ions being attracted to the anode because the anode is positively charged. Notice how I don't have any electrons on the anode right now because this is positively charged. So what happens? The chlorides are attracted to the anode. 
where electrons are taken off, the electrons are removed from the negative ions to form the element, in this case, chlorine. Now be aware that chlorine is diatomic. It's in group seven, it exists as a diatomic molecule. So the equation then, we need two chlorides to become one chlorine, and each of those chlorides is losing an electron. So the electrons appear on the right hand side of the equation to show electrons being lost. Okay, so you're going to have a go at a few questions yourself or a few examples. I suggest you pause the video now. You're going to identify the ions present and then you're going to give me a half equation at the cathode and a half equation at the anode. Okay, so for the first one, the ions present will be Al, 3 plus, aluminium's in group 3, it will be 3 plus. Oxide is O2 minus. So the cathode, aluminium ions are going to gain electrons. In this case, it's going to gain three electrons to become aluminium metal. So at the cathode, aluminium metal would be discharged. Again, most likely as a liquid. At the anode, oxide ions are going to form oxygen, which means we require two oxides. And each of the oxides is going to lose two electrons. So we need four electrons on the right. So oxygen gas would be formed at the anode. Next, calcium two plus and O2 minus. So this time at the cathode, we've got calcium ions gaining two electrons to become calcium metal. And we'll have the identical equation at the anode. We'll have two oxides becoming oxygen and four electrons being released. Next, we have K plus and Cl minus. Potassium's in group one, chloride's in group seven. So this time at the cathode, it's gonna be potassium gaining an electron to become potassium metal. This time, chloride will become chlorine. Chlorine is diatomic, so we require two chlorides and each of those chlorides loses an electron so we have plus two E minus. Notice how at the cathode, electrons are on the left because they are being gained, and at the anode, the electrons are on the right because they are being lost. Finally, the last one, we have Fe3 plus and O2 minus. So the cathode will be Fe3 plus, gaining three electrons to become Fe. And at the anode, two oxides becoming one oxygen and four electrons. So let's step this up a level then. What do we do if the electrolysis is taking place in aqueous state rather than molten state? So aqueous, as a reminder, that means it's being dissolved in water. If water is present in the electrolyte, then that means we also have H plus cations and OH minus anions present from water. So we now have two cations that are going to be attracted to the cathode and two anions that are going to be attracted to the anode. So let's look at the example then. So we're going to look at sodium chloride. In the previous example, we looked at sodium chloride molten or liquid. This time we're looking at sodium chloride aqueous. So we know that Na plus and Cl minus will be present, but we also have H plus and OH minus ions. So this time, Na plus, Cl minus, OH minus and H plus. So let's have a look at the cathode. So this time we have two cations, not just Na plus, we also have H plus. So what's going to happen here is it becomes a competition. It's either going to be sodium ions gaining electrons or hydrogen ions gaining electrons. And what's going to happen is the one that gains them the easiest is going to be the one that gains them. In this case, hydrogen will gain electrons to become H2 gas. The sodium will not gain electrons. Now, don't worry about that 
because you actually can use the electrochemical series and you don't need to memorize this. You'll be provided with an electrochemical series. And this is a, a measure of how easily things gain electrons. The bigger their value, the more easily they gain electrons. So in this example here, if we highlight sodium and hydrogen. Now, minus 2.71 versus zero. Zero is a bigger number than minus 2.71. Therefore, hydrogen ions gain electrons more easily than sodium. So we're using the electrochemical series to determine whether or not the electrons are gained by the metal or by the H+. In this case, then, we've got two H plus ions gaining electrons to become a H2 molecule. But what happens at the anode? Aqueous means that we also have hydroxide ions. Now, if the other ion is a halide ion from group seven, then it is still the halogen that will form. So in this case, we have chloride and hydroxide. Now, because the chloride is in group seven, it is the halogen that will form. So in this example, it will be two Cl minus becoming Cl2 and two electrons. If though the other anion isn't in group seven, so for example, it might be a sulfate solution or it could be a nitrate solution. If it is sulfate or nitrate, then what happens is the hydroxide does lose electrons and the hydroxide becomes oxygen and water. Now, this is actually from GCSE higher level, believe it or not, and you do just need to know that bottom equation. Right, have a go at these for yourself then. So we're looking at aqueous solutions this time. We can see by the state symbols that they're aqueous. I suggest you pause the video, but start by identifying the ions and then use the electrochemical series and the knowledge from the previous slide to determine the half equations and what will be discharged. So pause the video and have a go. So I'm going to start by identifying the ions. We're going to have K plus and H plus, we're going to be our cations, and NO3 minus and OH minus. So I need to use the electrochemical series. I'm finding potassium and hydrogen. Now hydrogen has a smaller value, so it is the hydrogen that will gain the electrons and not the potassium to form hydrogen molecules. So at the cathode, hydrogen gas will be discharged, not potassium metal. And at the anode, the two anions I've got, NO3 minus and OH minus, it's not a halogen, so in this case, if it's not a halogen that's present, it's the hydroxide that will lose four electrons to become oxygen and two waters. So next one, magnesium two plus and H plus. Now magnesium is above hydrogen, so hydrogen again is going to gain electrons more easily than magnesium. So we have the same reaction here. So hydrogen gas will be discharged at the cathode. My anions are chloride and hydroxide. Chloride is in group seven, so the halogen will be discharged. So we'll have two chlorides becoming chlorine and releasing two electrons. Third one, K plus and H plus, again, the K plus is above hydrogen, hydrogen is below potassium, so hydrogen will gain electrons more easily and hydrogen gas will be discharged at the cathode. Our anions, we've got Br minus and hydroxide. Br minus is a halogen, so the halogen will be discharged. In this case, it's bromine, Br2. And finally, copper two plus and H plus, now this time, copper is in fact below hydrogen. So the copper will be discharged. So this will be copper metal being discharged at the cathode. 
anions, SO4 2 minus, OH minus. There's no halogen present, so this time it's hydroxide losing four electrons to become oxygen and two water. And that's the end of the ease of electrolysis. Hopefully you found it useful. Make sure you like and subscribe.